Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. The Nikkei Index, the most widely watched stock index in Japan, just had a bad chart scenario. The MACD, one of the, my favorite indicators, is showing right now a cross, indicating perhaps a downtrend has started in the Japanese market. What does this mean for your portfolio? What does it mean for Japanese stocks? What should you do with your money? Are there certain stocks that you should be shorting or are there certain stocks you should be buying? I wanna give you guys a quick five to 10 minute update video. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy. Please see the below description area as to who I am. I just started YouTube this year, just started this channel. So would appreciate if you subscribe going forward. Today, currently the time right now is 3.55 p.m. in Japan, uh, November 20th. So it is 1.55 a.m. on Eastern time zone in the U.S. Let's first do an update as to what's going on with some economic news in Japan, what's going on with coronavirus. There's just some updates as to what's going on with Japan because a lot of news has come out the last past few days and maybe this has impacted the Nikkei index. Then let's go into the technicals, everything that I'm looking at. And then finally, at the very end, I'll give you my opinion. I think which stocks you should be looking at and how I think you should be digesting this news. First and foremost, guys, there's a lot of economic news that has been out lately. In Japan today, there were actually three big pieces of economic news. Number one was PMI and the first one is manufacturing PMI. Manufacturing PMI is different from non-manufacturing PMI, which is services. And this came out and this came out again, but a little bit below expectations and it's still below 50. Japan has been below 50 now for over one year. And even before coronavirus, because of the increase in the new consumption tax plan, still it is in what's called a declining PMI. PMI basically is rated by hundreds and hundreds of companies on different categories of what's going on in terms of new orders, in terms of inventories, in terms of prices, etc. And it's a pretty good barometer. It usually moves together with GDP and other economic indicators. In Japan, this came in less than expected again for PMI for manufacturing. Also, also, the service sector PMI also was announced and this didn't come in as well as expected either. This came in at again at 46.7. Again, this is lower than last month and the month before, so that's not good. Most countries are going in an upward direction and Japan still has not breached 50 and it still hasn't really caught up with even pre-coronavirus. So showing that not just the manufacturing sector, but the service sector is under pressure at the moment. Finally, we see uh, in Japan, the well, the inflation rate was announced. And inflation rate was very bad. It was not good. For October, we fell zero minus 0.7%. 0 and this is a CPI including fresh food. Uh, so this is called core CPI. And again, this has continued to go down and down and down and down and down. And as you know, guys, stock markets do usually reflect inflation prices. The more inflation, usually more stock prices will rise. Usually GDP will go up, etc. As long as inflation is not too high, you want prices to be generally rising. This is part of basic macroeconomics. Now, Japan, again, a big impact on this, unfortunately, was due to this new go to travel program that they're doing, uh, which is basically trying to uh, stimulate the travel sector, the hospitality sector in Japan due to coronavirus. It's been hit really hard and the government has been announcing all these discount programs, making travel easier. I think it's kind of stupid. I think it's retarded. Actually, during coronavirus, people shouldn't be getting on trains and traveling and spreading the disease, meeting a lot of people going into transportation areas uh, where there's a lot of congestion you should be sitting at home or meeting small groups of people. So I think this government plan is retarded. Nonetheless, they're doing it and it's also hitting the economy because inflation prices were low. So that's the main news that's been out today. Now let's go into the second part of this video, which is the charts. Again, guys, if you don't understand my chart lingo, see the below videos, my previous videos, it's gonna be a better refresher so you understand what I'm talking about. Otherwise, this might be too much information or you just might not know what I'm talking about and it's a not a good use of your time. So looking right now at the Nikkei Index Futures, this is the main Japanese market in Japan. Now, this has been on a wild ride lately. It's been up straight up lately uh, after the U.S. election was announced that Biden has mainly won. And then after the vaccine news has been announced from Moderna and Pfizer, we've seen it just go up and up and up. And it's been breaking out. It break through a big level, 23,400. And it's just gone straight up since the beginning of November for most of this month. Now, finally, though, MACD is showing across. Now, MACD, guys, I'll put a review for MACD at the end of this video, but basically the MACD line is the blue line and the orange line is the signal line. They're both exponential moving averages. MACD is a faster exponential moving average. So when this crosses through, it indicates usually that there may be a short-term momentum trend. Right now, this is indicating that it's crossing through on the 
basically crossing through downwards, uh, indicating that perhaps that there is a downward momentum shift going on in MACD. Uh, and RSI we're seeing here, going down but still hasn't broken through 50 yet so over the last 14 days there's still been more up days than down days again guys for our details on macd and rsi see my previous videos it's below in the description area of this video finally let's just take a look at bollinger band here bollinger band it's sitting right in the middle and the bollinger band is getting thinner and thinner well it's getting narrower and narrower and narrower indicating that nothing really is going on at the moment here uh interestingly let's just look at some etfs here uh, just to see if we can see, uh, let's see the Topix ETF, for example. I'll look at the, both the Topix and the Nikkei. The Topix ETF, not really big volume. Uh, Nikkei ETF as well, very, very thin volume. This is like almost nothing going on here. Uh, again, this is showing a, a cross as well, indicating that maybe there may be a, a slight downward momentum shift going on in Japanese stocks. Uh, let's do a little bit more analysis. Again, just looking at the uh, positionings report according to COT. This is COT CFTC report for Nikkei Futures asset managing positions. Eh, yeah, over the last couple of years, it's still kind of relatively a little bit high. But let's compare this with, let's say, COT report, the legacy report. And this is looking at the non commercial positions, uh, just the blue line. So we don't need to look at the commercial line at the non reporting line. This is still showing that it's kind of undervalued. So to me, the futures market really isn't showing anything of over valued or undervaluedness. Uh, looking at the ETF sector just in the US, just to look at the Japanese ETFs, the main one just is EWJ. Right now, this is the largest ETF in Japan. It's in the 30 percentile rank, meaning implied volatility is very, very low. Not many people are buying, I think, put options. Not many people are buying insurance right now. It's very low. But it's also low, to be honest with you, with the US market, the SPY as well, which is 33 percentile rank. So nothing really special going on here. Uh, do note that the Nikkei right now is trading pretty closely, the Nikkei futures with the US futures. The correlation is very high right now, almost near one. So US futures are probably going to dictate a lot of Japan's move, given the fact that Japan right now, the volume is so low. So maybe we should be looking at US futures. And if you look at US futures, especially if you look at US futures, the S&P 500 futures, unfortunately it seems that we may be going into a similar situation here perhaps a bit of a downward shift a downward trend now the last time we had a signal here the markets fell subsequently each time it was a pretty good signal is this time going to be the same very difficult to assess from what I'm seeing right now, this takes some caution, but I think we need to look specifically at which stocks and which markets, because just because the Japanese market and the S&P 500 is going down, that doesn't mean everything is going to go down. For example, if we look at the bank index for now in Japan right now, it still hasn't crossed through. It's still showing a good momentum uptrend. So I think there are certain sectors that deserve caution in Japan and certain sectors that maybe don't deserve caution as well. Some of these other stocks, let's say if we look at Toyota, it's already crossed through. Honda, it still hasn't crossed through yet. Uh, Nintendo, Nintendo actually looks like it may be crossing to the upward momentum, indicating that maybe it's a good time to buy back. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Some of the airline stocks indicate an actual upward momentum, MACD, upward momentum. So I think it depends on the stocks you look at. At the very end, what's my opinion on what you should do with your money, given all this news, the economic news, coronavirus news, and what's going on in the charts in Japan? Again, guys, as usual, investing is, this is my own analysis, and I want you guys really to listen. I know, I know I say this and over and over. Please make sure you do this with self-responsibility, make your own decisions. I say this with love. I don't say this out of anger. I love you guys all. I'm saying this because I don't want you to depend on me. I don't want you to depend on anybody. I don't want you to depend on a robo-advisor. Robo-advisors are terrible. See my videos from yesterday. I don't want you to depend on some financial advisor. I don't want you to depend on your friend, your family, even me. Investing at the end of the day is your own money. It's better that you understand what's going on and you take charge and you will feel better about it longer term. Just trust me on that advice. You'll make more money that way. Uh, that being said, guys, long-term investment-wise, just continue to invest normally right now. I don't think there's anything big to worry about. Markets are no more, no huge events going on. All the events are passed, elections passed, coronavirus might be passing, so invest accordingly. Short term wise, what should you do at the moment? Right now, I think you need to be very picky about which sectors you look at. In Japan, I'm continuing to advocate looking at the airlines right now. The airlines are showing very different MACDs here. They're going up here. MACDs are going up. 
up here, right? Totally different. Even looking at the US airlines, American or Delta, the largest airlines, they're going up, right? So in Japan, you can look at the airlines. I think in Japan, also look at the banks here. They still continue to go up. This looks a little bit dangerous, but it hasn't crossed yet. Now, short term, if you're playing this stuff and if you're playing this for trends, if you want to hedge, then maybe now is a good time to have a hedge. I would look especially at the Nikkei as a hedge. So what I was looking at before, 1321, I believe, is the Nomura Asset Management Fund Nikkei 22.5 ETF. Maybe short this as a hedge right now because you don't know what's going to happen. This is showing across. You need to respect the charts. I don't know if this has really to do with coronavirus or it has to do with all the bad economic data. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's just moving with the U.S. market. It doesn't matter at the end of the day what the reason is. It's right now crossing. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's not. Maybe the RSI is right and maybe RSI is okay so far. Just to be safe, hedge a little bit for your short term portfolio. I think that's my advice. But that doesn't mean you should just throw everything away. I still like the banks and airline stocks in Japan. Thanks for watching my video, guys. If you enjoyed today's content, please press the like button below and please subscribe to my channel going forward. Coming up next is the FRB, the Fed and the U.S. Treasury Secretary. They're butting heads. Is this the end of quantitative easing? What's going to happen with U.S. stocks? I'll give you guys an update. Stay tuned. Thanks again, guys.